thank you everyone for taking the time to to be able to jump on the meeting with us and to join us here. Um, you know, a lot of us have gone to working from home. Um, Joe, you're forced to work from home, so uh, thanks for taking the time out of your day to to come help um, support us and then listen to the moss moss peel. Uh, Ed, I appreciate you joining. Uh, you reached out to me last night. Uh, good, good thing. Uh, nice to see you on the on the call. Um, from uh, from our team, we got uh, Kaya, Ben, myself, and Vic on the call, I believe. Um, so throughout the throughout the presentation, uh, I believe Jesus is going to join as well. Uh, from what he had mentioned, so Jesus is out of our office in Chihuahua. Uh, so if anybody from on the call speaks Spanish and has any questions in Spanish, uh, you can either ask uh, Jesus or Victor, both fluent in Spanish, uh, and can uh, ask all the questions. If they don't know the answers, they can uh, translate it for me. I'll try and pick it up, but I'm not the greatest. Um, and uh, translate it for me so I can answer the question for you. Uh, other than that, the the call is being recorded. So um, what we'll do is we'll reach out to everybody on the call and whoever's registered for the call, uh, and be sending. We'll send out the <clears throat> we'll send out the webinar once it's completed uh, to everybody. And if you have any questions, by all means, uh, at the end of the process, you'll have my information. You can reach out to me directly, or any or any of my team. Uh, to answer any questions regarding Moss or any of NSS technologies, um, as we have great partnerships in the industry. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it off. Uh, it's 11:05. I'm trying to keep everybody here too long. Um, I should be able to go through all the slide deck in about 30 minutes. This is a very interactive uh, webinar. So what I want to do is um, encourage you all to uh, speak up, uh, ask questions as I'm going on. If you don't understand something uh, we can take the time to answer the question if it's something that i can take off offline i'll write down any your question and make sure to add it as a follow-up uh, directly with you um I guess, like i did mention it, it very interactive so feel free to be, take part in, in in the webinar itself um this is our first official webinar wednesday so we're kicking it off we're trying to look at different ways to reach out to your clients and to people that have been affected by COVID-19. So I, I, again, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, thank you for taking the opportunity to sit down and really um, take a look at our technology and what NSS has to offer in the, in the industry. So starting off the, starting off the presentation um, now, we're gonna go into MOS. So MOS stands for Minor Operated Survey System. So essentially what the system is doing is, is allowing us the ability to decrease overbreak dilution. And by decreasing overbreak dilution, we're increasing our productivity and our revenue for our bottom line and for our clients. So um, how, how are we able to do that? Well, we're able to do that because we're operating directly right on to any mine design and we're able to take that mine design in mind directly based on what we assume to be the most accurate way of um, of mining methods for underground um, should we not have a robotic instrument. Um, also, we provide real-time information to the face. So this is, this is an ability to really open up the communications to from surface to underground. We're able to get real-time information from the face, what the face actually looks like, what broke, how did the shift go, how did we progress, are we online in grade? Uh, by utilizing this comp computerized survey system and used by the miners, used by the supervisors, used by the people that are at, that are at the working phase. And all this information is being transformed right back up to surface to all the decision makers in the engineering department, geology department, whoever needs to see the information in the most real time as we possibly can. Now, I'm going to refer to real time throughout the entire presentation, but the real time is based on um, the infrastructure set up on your site. So if your site allows us to have the real-time capability at the face, then we can send that information from our tablet as soon as it hits a communication portal all the way up to surface. So if that's not at the face and it's at a 
refuge station, if it's at a shaft collar, if it's on surface, it's just a t all the tablet needs to do is understand where the communication uh, network is. So as soon as it hits that communication network, we're able to communicate. Um, and lastly, on this slide, uh, we've partnered strategically with Hexagon Mining and Leica Geosystems. So um, in the next slide, I'll go over. Um, so NSS at a glance. So we're a technology solution provider. We've been in the industry for 30 plus years um, as um, industry standards uh, have gone up, so have gone, have exceeded, so have we. Uh, we've continuously to provide strategic partners in the industry, like like uh, Hexagon Mining, where I truly do believe um, they are first in class uh, when it, in regards to some of the technologies that they have to offer. Um, having strategic partnerships with these people, it improves productivity and quality to our end goal, to our clients and then to our stakeholders. Uh, we also have a global reach, as I mentioned, Jesus should be jumping on the call, I believe, um, uh, from our Mexico office. So we, we established key resellers outside of Canada to be able to help support all of our global needs. Uh, in the last 30 years, we've had a vast range of mines that we've serviced throughout the world. Uh, tremendous, robust financials, as I, keep, as I mentioned, 30 plus years in business uh, allows us to have a really strong balance sheet. So we're able to really, really focus on globally uh, servicing all of these mines throughout the world and then putting money back into R&D to ensure that we have the best in product to be able to partner with um, our clients. So some key MOS uh, customers to date uh, that I'd like to um, pinpoint in regards to where we're at. So Glencore, Newmont, Ballet, Impala, um, Barrick, Pan American, and several of the contractors. So I, I like to really focus on the contractors that I put in here. Cementation, Technica, Red Path, DMC, big players in the market um, that do all the contracting work. What they've realized by having a MOS system at hand, um, when they can bid a job, when they're bidding a job, they don't necessarily need to have that surveyor on at every face to ensuring that we're online in grade uh, that surveyor can do multiple jobs um, more direct jobs check surveys uh, um, in regards to uh, as builds stuff like that so great great to put in uh, there uh, my my top six customers and then also with my uh with the contractors of choice uh, next, I'm going to play a video. Throughout the video, I'm going to stop and play. Um, it's going to show a really good visualization of, of the MOS system. I'm going to try and explain it as best I can as the video is going on. Uh, again, as I mentioned, if you have any questions, feel free to um, ask any questions uh, as we go ahead. Um, hopefully this plays. Perfect. So as you can see in this process here, uh, in a typical mine setting, you'll have the one individual that comes up. So in the video, you're gonna see two individuals. Uh, we just did it for the ability to show better camera angles uh, for the MOS system. But uh, a typical mine cycle and a typical mining situation, what we'll see is a one person operation. So the jumbo man, the supervisor, somebody before the jumbo gets into the heading is gonna come to the set, come to that face and prep the face where depending where we are geographically, this could be anywhere between a 30 minute to two hour job um, conventionally. Where at the MOS system, we bring this to, uh, we're doing it in six minutes now, our markup. So really, really impacting our cycle time. So we're able to get mark up our time, uh, mark up our face. We don't need a man carrier. We're away from the face. We use safety precautions to get away from everything um, so that we're not introducing ourselves to loose from the face. But as you can see, so <clears throat> this individual, he's setting up uh, his tripod. He's going to put the instrument on top of the tripod, and then he's going to go directly into uh, one of the only uh, times throughout the process where he touches the instrument because it's a fully robotic instrument uh, where he's going to shoot in two points. Uh, automatically so that we know exactly where we are in in space 
um, in space, I mean by underground, so we know exactly where the face is. So he's going to shoot in these two known points. This, these point, these prisms are carried by uh, the miners. So as they develop forward and they develop in the heading, they're inputting their own control points. So they're doing all of this job. They're they're doing all of this as they're um, mining forward. <clears throat> so as he goes on, he's going to once he gets into um, set up and he knows exactly where he is, the instruments are going to go into robotic mode and we're going to be able to, uh, this is where we're tracing out the actual face. So this is our blasted rock. This is after ground supports come in. So this is where we get our real visual visualization of what the face looks like today. So if, for example, night shift came in, drilled off this round, sorry, day shift came in, drilled off the round, night shift blasted, muck, ground support, we're coming in the following day and we're going to be able to see exactly what broke and how and what the image looks like. So as we go in, in future slides, we're going to be able to see exactly what that face looks like. So if there's any kind of overbreak, if there's underbreak, if there's anything that we need to make any kind of corrective measures based on that mine design that we need to mine towards, uh, we can make it instantly. It's not, we don't have to wait for survey to come down. We don't have to wait for anything. We're able to do it uh, and make an impact right away that day, that round. So I, once he finishes the, the, uh, the process of doing the, uh, the profile, the face profile, what the system will automatically do, because it's a robotic system, it's gonna start marking up your center line. So here, as you can see, it's marking up your center line on the face, and then it's gonna mark up your center line on the back or the, on the, Floor. So when it's doing this, as you can see, we're using, we're utilizing a spray paint arm. So we're taking all, all safety precautions in order. We don't need a, a basket. We don't need anything to pick us up to, to get to the face or anything like that. Um, we're able to use this, this apparatus to create, um, give us all of our line and grade. So here we're marking up the center line on the back. We're marking the center line on the back. Uh, in most cases, if we're going down ramp, we're marking on the back. If we're going up ramp, we're marking up on the floor. So it all depends on the operator where he wants to mark it up. As you can see, the total station laser comes on and it automatically goes to exactly where that line is. So you just follow the laser dot, much like a cat would, and you just follow and then um, trace out where, where all your center, line, center lines are. So I, at this process, after the center line is completed, now we're doing gray lines. So we'll take in consideration whatever um, dimensions your mine design has. So if we're at a plus 10, minus 10, plus 12, 15, whichever our grade is, Moss will automatically draw this line on the walls based on your current grade. Um, so and again, you just follow the laser around with your paint and you mark up, mark it up on the wall. So it's giving your booms the actual grade where you need to be mining. So it's taking every hydraulic jumbo and making it semi-robotic now. Uh, we're giving you all the, all the measurements, all the dimensions, everything you need to, to, to drill most accurately on the face going forward. Uh, also, throughout this process, what the miners or what this crew doesn't even realize they're doing is they're actually doing the tow for the pickup of the day. So we're getting the actual dimensions of the face right now without them even knowing that they're actually doing the job. Sorry, the as built of the face. After this process is complete, he's going to mark up some of his walls on the left and right, and then we go into the face markup. So the laser is going to turn to the face and mark up every single collar location we need to be drilling at. So we take into consideration whether we take into consideration exactly where we are in in the cycle and in the mine design. So if we have a TDB or if we have an intersection, if we have anything like that, um, what Moss automatically does is is it has an algorithm in the background that works with your engineering department or Orca or anything. Uh, any of your drilling um, engineering patterns and we automatically um, and we automatically make sure ensure that we're drilling as close to that mine design based on that algorithm that we know exactly what your pattern needs to be for that phase for that round for that day 
So as I mentioned, as we come into an intersection and we're breaking and where we need to open up, we take into consideration what that dimension is and we give you a live pattern for that phase, um, which where the, on the robotic side, so you know, your uh, EpiRocks, your Sandvix, they all do this, but what, ha what tends to happen is there's an engineer on surface that needs to generate these patterns, best case patterns going forward. So he almost has to guesstimate exactly where the face is. But with Moss, what we're able to do is increase the efficiency on the robotics, but also increase the efficiency on the hydraulic jumbos. Because this data is what exactly what the robotics need. They need to know exactly where the face is. They need to know what the pattern is. And we jump, we dump that pattern right into all the robotic um, jumbos. But at the same time, if, if, it's, if we're working in just a hydraulic space, I guess you could say, uh, we're generating, we're giving you your pattern, your gray line, your walls, we're giving all of your markups that you possibly need for this process. So once this process is complete, uh, the miner will tear down, pull out, and then he has all of his line grade control, everything that he needs to for the, for the round to, to proceed. As I mentioned, this, is, this has become a six to eight minute process. Um, here in North America, where we've seen, um, you know, this process becomes, is about a 30 minute to, to 45 minute process. And we, we've really done a really good job at uh, decreasing cycle time. So this next slide goes, it iterates back into what I just discussed about the video. So with the mining from design. So as you can see, if you can all follow my cursor in the top right hand side, is a ramp situation. So where Moss really, really excels, where you get your ROI, your return on investment, is in ramp situations. Because we're able to give you exactly where the face is, how to, how to line up your uh, drill based on where we are in the ramp, but we also give you a layout for where you start fanning. So if we're in a down, a down ramp turning right, we're gonna start our fan here. And then we're, and it'll give you all the numbers you're going to see in a different slide in the next slide, I believe, or no, a couple slides. But what I, what I mean by what all the dimensions that we're giving the driller. So once he's back in this cabin and he's drilling, he's able to know exactly how far he needs to drill, um, how far the drill rod needs to go in the, in the face in regards to squaring off the face. So down here at the bottom left is your typical, um, Moss, uh, moss markup. So when we do our profile, this is what it looks like. So what we're able to do is make any kind of corrective measures. So here, the one on the far right, a miner is going to see this in real time and see what the face looks like. And he's going to be able to make his corrective measures to get back on that profile, to get back exactly where the design pattern should be. So he's naturally going to look out his right holes to get back on line and grade in this situation. <clears throat> Um, so we're able to give you accurate line and grade. We get an actual visual of the, uh, the profile of every round. Uh, also, we're able to 3D wireframe all of this and get actual 3D scans of your, um, of your face, of your round. So your month end reporting your, it is done daily. Your volumes are done daily. So this is all stuff that uh, allows workflow uh, efficiency to, to really thrive on. So the components of the system, so all you're looking at for the components in an operation system is your robotic total station, your tablet, uh, tripod, and some other minor accessories. So this is a typical setup that all of our sites ha are, have been using, uh, which is very um, easy, easy in regards to setup um, and, and all of that, sorry. Um, so the miner, he's going to follow a seven step procedure. So when he's looking at this, I'm not going to go into all the seven steps, but basically the, uh, these seven steps will allow us to mark up our face and understanding where we need to go, uh, forward. And it gives you great prompts. So as you finish one step, the next step is going to naturally turn green and go, you cannot get to the next step until you complete the first step and it goes green, green, green. And then once you're finished, then you're able to pull out and finish. 
Um, here, I, I give a very conservative um, number saying we can market it up in less than 15 minutes, but I know Newmont uh, at Hoya Pond is doing this in uh, about eight minutes. So they're doing, and their over break is under 10%. So it's, they're doing really, really good. Um, so how are we able to be so accurate? So with Moss, as I was saying, Moss generates, has an algorithm in the background that is, allows us to really optimize the blast patterns that are given us from Orca, Dino, engineering groups, um, so we can optimize your blast results in real time. So on the top right, this is what Moss automatically generates for every single round. If you remember correctly, I was saying in a ramp situation going down. So here's your fanning. Your fanning is going to start from here. We give this pivot point for your driller to know exactly where he needs to start fanning his rounds. We give him right here his length of, we know what your length of your drill rod is. So we're going to say, uh, how, how deep do you need to drill? So this one's 3.7 meters in order to square up our face best as we can. Um, should we come into a TDB? Should we come into an intersection? Moss automatically generates this pattern uh, on best fit compared to, because we know exactly where we are in, in real space. Um, and as I mentioned, we, we integrate right into the EpiRock and the San, uh, Sandvix uh, robotic jumbles. We automatically generate what's called an IREDES file. And by generating the IREDES file, we can do that through uh, remote capabilities or by tethered or uh, USB. So once we finish step I think it's step six in the most MOS process. Um, we're able to um, take that and then go into the robotic side of the cycle. And here's a great, here's the representation the miner sees every single round. So what we're able to really do is optimize on this. So this was taken at Facunas. It's a site here in Sudbury. It's a training facility, but it's a great opportunity to show the advantages of MOS. So as you can see here, on um, on your back and on your left side is all in blue. That's your actual profile where we're supposed to be mining to. Now it's mining, I understand we're not building a church, but uh, if we have this many tights, we have to take into consideration, will a rock truck fit? Will our scoops fit? Will ve ventilation be uh, an issue? So what we what we're able to do is make these corrective measures right away we're giving the information to the frontline worker right away to be able to say hey listen i got to make a mistake i got to make um some adjustments to the mistakes that were made maybe it's not a mistake maybe it's just a slight adjustment so he's naturally going to look let look his booms to the left uh to open up the left hand side on the back it's tight so he's automatically going to generate some more uh drill holes up on the top right and he's going to look those up to try and get back on uh, light and gray. So Moss gives this visualization every single round. Also at the same time, so here in, in the image, it gives you what your actual overbreak percentages are. So this is where it's fun. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to use Newman as an example because it's great because the culture there that they've developed through um, by utilizing Moss, it becomes that, that, that cross shift mentality is is now become, hey, my underbreak was, or sorry, my overbreak was less than yours. And it's a competition to get the best overbreak. So that kind of dynamic team molding is great. That's the kind of, the, you know, the kind of initiatives our, our clients want to encourage in, 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 in their employees. So it becomes a, a really good selling factor for, for us as well. So not only are we winning because our, the, the ROI that we're looking at for Moss is, is in the overbreak, um, but it's, it's gamifying the, the process for the employees to understand and then get them to get them really engaged. Um, so here is a typical example from utilizing a survey system and um, our national survey system that, that we've used in the past, so versus Moss. So what we, what we can see, especially here, if we can just imagine that this would be in a, um, oh, sorry, I have somebody in the waiting room. If we can imagine that this is in a typical uh, ore setting, we're going into a scope, 
So all of this wouldn't be allocated. So this is over 150, 150 cubic meters of material haven't been allocated in six meters of development. So you can just imagine it not being able to um, take those volumes in regards to your reconciliation in a stove. So that's, that's a lot of material that's not accounted for. Um, so based on everything that we've gone through so far, sorry, my Siri was acting up. Uh, everything that we've gone up, uh, gone through so far has been in regards to MOS functions for operations. So that's been great. Uh, our primary focus uh, for the MOS system is in our operations, giving the tools to the job, to, tools to the employees that needed at the face in real time. But in addition to that, we also have some additional MOS functions for the engineering group and geology. So I'll go over these in, in a little bit more details in, in the next few slides, but we are, it's a complete survey or tablet with all your day-to-day -day sur uh, survey functionalities, including your CMS. We also do long hole layouts um, by utilizing all of your, your mind design. Uh, geology mapping live right in the tool and actual uh, XYZ reference and we do plotting. So it, all of these help out with uh, the understanding of becoming more efficient on site with everything that we do. Um, so with the additional MOS or the, with, with the additional MOS survey engineering uh, for engineering and geology, um, first we see the survey functions. So with the survey functions, so all your day-to-day -day fun survey functions, as I, was, as I mentioned, so your topes, your construction layouts, your check surveys, um, closing loops, travers, all of that is done on within MOS as well. So not only we have a MOS package for operations, excuse me, and we also have a MOS package for our surveyors. Um, so in the surveyor function, we can do construction layout. So your construction layout because MOS is developed in an AutoCAD platform, you can take all of your construction layouts. So let's say we have a conveyor belt or we have um, a shaft station or any kind of construction that we'd be building, a, a truck chute, something uh, where we have drawings for. We can take that drawing and put it right into MOS and now go into auto track and live mode and be able to do all of your construction layouts. So you can lay out dowels, you can lay out um, all your pillars, your construction, your steel beams, center of steel. So all of this can be done with it by utilizing MOS as well in the survey function. And then last but not least, CMS LiDAR scanning. So MOS also um, offers a CMS function. With the, CS, with the CMS function, we're able to turn this into a multi-tool. So not only can you utilize your total station to do all of your survey functions for the day, you can also use your survey gun to do MOS layout, or sorry, MOS CMSs. So as you can see here, these are the CMSs that are performed with our Leica total stations. So it's a LiDAR scan that we're able to utilize by putting into an open scope, either an overcut or an undercut. Uh, we can use our little buggy. So you can use the buggy that is in the image here, or we have a robotic buggy that we drive it into from a, from a safe distance. And at the same time, you're able to go and capture all of your CMS data. So this, uh, this uh, example here is a CMS done in, uh, I believe Frank said it was eight minutes, um, done in actual XYZ reference for the stope you can see the visualization right in, on your tablet um, in real time. We can see if there's any discrepancies in regards to that stove. We can see whether or not we need to do a second scan. We can see if it's online, if there's a hanging wall, if there's a hang up. Uh, you're able to see everything and model it and then put it into 3D um, wireframe within 10 minutes. So you're scanning uh, input, scanning, input onto the tablet, onto the tablet, wireframe, just like you see here within, within 10 minutes after the, within 10 minutes of the scan. So it's a really fast, slick process. 
Uh, we, we've created an interface right into 3D Reshaper, so it's, it's, fan, it's phenomenal. It's, it works very, very well. So our next one, uh, after we get out of survey, we're able to do long hole markup. So with Moss, you're able to generate all of your long holes should you want to, should you need to. So if, you, if you're automatically, if you're generating your long holes uh, markups now in Mine Plan and uh, Deswick, A Mine, Pro Mine, you're more than welcome to continue doing that. And we can take that data and mark up everything we need to in the field based on that. Or you can generate it uh, through our MOSS function. Our MOSS function allows you to generate all of your slope optimization, your drill layout, your ring layout, all of that is it's really, really slick, really quick. And we're able to optimize all of your stopes is so you and uh, and lay out all of your drills. Now with that data, when we come into the field, the MOS, just like we're able to do for operations at the face, we're able to mark up everything that driller needs to for his long hole. So we can mark up every call or location that he needs to drill, either on the back or in the face or on the floor. Uh, give him. And then we also track the boom, so we can give him all of his dip, his azimuth, azimuth, so we can ensure that drill remains on the proper dip and azimuth throughout the entire process of drilling off that round, which will optimize your drilling uh, significantly. So it, it's, it's a great, great function. Uh, we're working hand in hand with some, uh, some mine operations up here in the northern, uh, northern Canada. Um, this is one of our newer flagship uh, products that we released this year. So uh, by all means, um, it's something that we're, we're looking for some really good uh, partners with. Uh, and then next we have geoface and back mapping. So an, another function of MOSS for the geology team now. So for the geology team, what we're able to do is utilize the, um, all of our face mapping. So we're, we can get a three point, 3D, uh, sorry, um, a LIDAR scan. So a LIDAR scan gives you all of our three point, 3D point recognition. We take the image by utilizing the same instrument. So we can take that image with a MS-60, uh, like as MS-60. So as you can see in the center picture, it is exactly that. So this becomes a 3D representation. So we take that image, we take our 3D scan, and we superimpose that image onto that 3D scan so we can mold it, we can, we can um, we can rotate it, we can do everything we need to. So the digitization process for the geolog geologist, the field geologist, has become very, very quick in, in actual XYZ reference. So what I mean by XYZ reference, because we're utilizing a survey grade piece of equipment in order to do this, we know exactly what that face looks like in relative space. So if you look at this center uh, image, there's some structure that's coming right down the middle. So a geologist would be able to map based on, based on exactly that. So he, he would be able to take this in 3D Reshaper, model everything he needs to, uh, and then go through throughout the entire process and then add in all your reserves. So this is all live at the face. You can do this with just either the tablet um, and then, or you can use it with the total station and tablet. So it, Depending on how accurate you want to be, I, I suggest you use the total station, but a lot of our uh, um, geologists would rather just do it on the tablet. But your digitization is complete at the face. So there's no time spending uh, sketching on, on, on a piece of paper at the face and then bring it to surface, digitizing it, putting it in the system, creating your reserves, creating all of your um, creating your drawing, creating everything you need to uh, put into your uh, your grades, all of that is all done. I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert in the geology side of things, uh, because if there's any geologists on the call, I don't want to offend you. Uh, but I know what we've done in the last 10 years working with, uh, with our clients, we've gotten it to a really high, high level uh, to be able to offer great geo mapping. Uh, so, and lastly, uh, one of the one of the small quick advantage uh, we're able to really plot quickly. So, depending on what mine um, design platform you're using uh, on site, you can utilize their plotting process, or you can utilize the Moss one. Uh, totally up to you. This here is Easy Plot Drawings within Moss. It takes about 
30 seconds to issue a drawing, your plot, your scale, everything's done um, for you. And then you can put all of your safety procedures on the back of, uh, of, <clears throat> of the drawing. Now, a lot of sites have gone completely digital and uh, because Moss allows you to have every single heading, every single drawing at the, at the end of your fingertips because it's all on your tablet. So when you come into an active heading, even if, if, you're, if your lineup for today was to go to level 10 and you know things change once we get underground and we now have to go to level 20, um, you can just pick up that drawing. It's not it, dependent on whether or not you have the drawing and the paper drawing or anything, it's all there. All the information is, is reliable right away. And now another really, really uh, unique piece to the Moss puzzle for that is should engineering, geology, anything have any kind of design change uh, throughout the day? Let's say uh, at eight o'clock in the morning, they decide that, oh, we need to put in a remuck. Um, so they can put in that remuck when the group is underground, as soon as that tablet uh, gets your communication or that change is done, that remuck is now on your, on your drawing and you're able to make all of your corrective measures for that day and you're able to draw out that remuck. So the next slide just goes over to uh, all, all the advantages in regards to everything that I talked about on the operation, survey, all of that. Like I said, everyone's gonna be getting a, a, a copy of, um, of this presentation. You'll be emailed. Uh, the, the video itself as well. So you'll be able to look at all the advantages here. And then next uh, is your, your value proposition. So where we see, really see the return on investment. So uh, case study, we've had one of our most recent sites uh, in, the in the first four weeks of operation within Moss, they, they decreased their overbreak by 18%. Uh, they purchased 10 units and within seven months of purchasing all 10 units, all Moss units and implementation, it was a full complete return on investment. So what I've done here is I put together a table, a very conservative table, um, which changed depending on where we are geographically. So if we're in Canada, these numbers may change. If we're in the United States, it might change. Mexico, uh, overseas, Australia, depending where we are, these numbers can change. But um, typical, what I use is a, is a development break even. So every 95 meters we're breaking uh, is our break even point. Uh, that could fluctuate, as I mentioned, depending where we are, uh, how much how much we're milling, uh, sorry, not milling, how much we're developing per year, and so on. Huh. So lastly, the final the final slide. Um, I'm going to open it up to everybody on on the call uh, for questions. By all means, uh, ask away. Like I said, it was a very interactive uh, presentation but you guys seem to let me speak. And then for those of you that are on the call that know me, know I will talk and talk and talk. So this is your opportunity to shut me up. You're on a roll, Bruno. I didn't, I didn't want to jump in, but uh, I think you addressed my biggest question, which is really from a business perspective, the ROI. But I guess if you, if you quantify the ROI or the payback term, you know, in general, what do you see is a, a you know, 95 meter was kind of the break even you know, as a non-surveyor, what, what's a 95 meter advance just in terms of time horizon and payback? Yeah, it's a good question. Thanks, Joe. So in regards to that, so depending on the mine and, and the cycle, so a typical mine will develop, you know, anywhere between two to 10 kilometers uh, of development per year. So 95 meters, you can see that return. As I mentioned, so 10 units, um, so I use that case study from one of our sites up here in up Northern Ontario, uh, as a reference for that 95. So where we saw a seven months return on the 10 units and the 95 meters, that's where we were able to see based on how much development they had per year and how much development they put together, uh, throughout that term. So it was 95 meters, but, uh, so that's, if we're four meter rounds, you, you know, easy math, we can do that in a month. That's uh, that's pretty good ROI, I'd say. And we have case studies to prove it, so yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks.
So I see there's quite a few other people on the call. Is there any other questions in regards to the MOS system? That's great. Well, if there's no other questions, what we'll do is I'll reach out. Um, I believe we have uh, everyone's everyone's contact information in regards to who joined us. So I'll, I'll reach out with a follow up uh, from the from the webinar. Like I said, we're going to be doing these uh, webinar Wednesdays every Wednesday. Today's topic was Moss. Uh, Next week, we're going into um, GeoMoss, uh, our Leica Geosystems um, uh, portfolio. Uh, by the end of the month, we're gonna be going into, so Victor Valdez will be presenting on our entire Hexagon portfolio. Um, so stay tuned, by all means, uh, like this was our first of, of many, uh, a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's gonna be something that we're gonna be introducing every Wednesday. So stay tuned, we'll see Hopefully, uh, some returning some returning fleet people, and uh, thanks for joining. Thanks, Bruno. Great presentation. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it.